Hey guys. All right. You know, you read some things on the forum and you don't know what to believe. You know, you read positive reviews on things, you read negative reviews on things. Sometimes you just got to bite the bullet, put out the money, and try things yourself. So that's what I got here today. This is called an arrow shield. You might have seen me make reference to it in one of my past videos. And I've been curious as hell because I know I'm pulling a wall down the road. You can feel it the way my setup is. Now the ideal situation would be to have one of these uh, camper top backs that slope up in the back, maybe even along with this thing. But nonetheless, we're gonna go take a little short drive with the camper and see how this thing works. And then back home to Louisiana. And I'm not sure where this is. I think it's Trinidad, Colorado. But anyway, you get the point. We did a lot of driving, a lot of testing, a lot of gauge watching. And it's all about this thing sitting on the roof here. Does it work or is it a waste of time and money? Well, let's take a look at it. So I went with this thing all the way to Wyoming and all the way back into Texas, somewhere around Childress. I said, well, let me actually get some numbers and find out just exactly what the difference is with this wind deflector and without this wind deflector. So I made a total of three runs with it and then three, ru three runs without it. And each one of these runs averaged about 45 minutes and at a constant speed of 65 miles an hour. And my data recorder reports the fuel usage in gallons per hour, but I converted it to mile per gallon for this video just because it's more of a meaningful number to us. And the purpose of this chart is just to show the average of all three runs, or all six runs actually, with three with, three without, just to show the conditions, the ambient air pressure, which would indicate the altitude and other things, the speed, uh, ambient air temperature. It's just to show that both, all three runs, all six runs were made very sim similar. And that's the only point of this chart. You can see that the intake temperature was fairly close on all this stuff. The boost was a little uh, higher, and you might wonder why. Well, this next chart is going, going to explain it all. In fact, if you look closely, you'll notice that all of these readings that pertain to load and working the truck are higher. So let's look at why. So here's the bitter truth. With the wind deflector, I literally got less mile per gallon. Now my thought going over there was, well, it can't hurt nothing. Even if it helps a little, I'll leave it up. So laughably, I went all the way up to Wyoming losing a little over a mile per gallon. So, have a good laugh on me on that one. I'll show you what it cost me here in a little bit. Now, as I mentioned before, I ran them back to back. 45 minutes up, 45 minutes down. 45 minutes up, 45 minutes down. Because I wanted the conditions, the atmospheric pressure, the temperature, all of those things to be as close as possible so it wouldn't give the advantage to either with or without it. And I think I accomplished that. And as I mentioned, I started this somewhere around Childress, Texas. So I've got quite a bit of data here uh, on my spreadsheet that I had to work through to come up with these numbers. But I'm quite sure they're accurate, unfortunately. As you can see, my first run 
nine and a half with it and 11 and a half without it. I couldn't believe that when I saw it. I said, there's no way. And uh, this is third and fourth run, 11 and 12. And the last run, which was number five and six, 10.3 with it, 10.6 without it. That's the closest I ever came to being able to justify this thing. And that was somewhere on I-20 before Shreveport and I-49 after Shreveport. I'm recording this data at one second intervals. So I pulled out all of the accelerating, decelerating, idling, anything that wasn't 65 miles an hour, a steady 65 miles an hour just to make sure that we are comparing apples with apples. Now I've got my little black box recording 100% of the time while I'm running, so I looked at my overall mileage, which is a lot, a lot of one second intervals, and it was something like seven or eight mile per gallon, and that was mostly with this thing up, unfortunately. But that also included idling while I'm refueling and you know, you name it. So what did this little failed experiment cost me? Well, here, here's the, the dollars and cents. And I'm glad I did it. And I stu I've still got the deflector and I might make a cutting board or something out of it. It's well built, it didn't scratch the truck, it goes on easy, everything. It just doesn't work with this setup I have. Maybe it works with somebody else's setup. Now my trip was 4,400 miles, and I had to cut it short, and I uh, won't get into that. So this is kind of theoretical anyway, because, you know, my total mile per gallon was probably seven, eight mile per gallon with all the idling, you know, while I'm refueling and stuff. I mean, basically, I'll start my truck uh, in the morning, and it won't shut down until wherever we at, unless it's going to be a extended stop which it usually isn't so you can look at this and see that theoretically at 11.4 mile per gallon 4400 miles I would have burnt 377 gallons at 10.3 which is what I got basically with the shield up or what I would have gotten if you know, 65 miles an hour steady, doing nothing, no wind, no headwind, no tailwind, no nothing. So like I say, this is theoretical. But I burnt 40 more gallons than I would have normally. And that's probably not quite that much because I did a lot of, you know, other things besides doing 65 miles an hour. But anyway, at roughly the diesel cost, say, 230 you know, got some as cheap as 189 and it had some a little higher up around 230, 40. So uh, it just depends, but that's pretty average. So my additional fuel cost was 92.65. And the reflector, I paid 370.13, which was a pretty good price. Got it from Walmart and they, uh, you know, source it out like they do Amazon. Uh, got it in just a couple of days. Hooked it up. Everything went well with it. Uh, it just didn't work. But so my total cost to do this experiment was $472.68. But as I said, I'm glad I did it. And hopefully it will help anybody else that's entertaining the thought of getting one of these things. There's, there's a lot more to consider than just, you know, popping this thing up and expecting it to def deflect wind, uh, you know, quite a few feet between your, your truck cab and the camper. Uh, so that's the way the cost went. Now, why did I get worse mileage with it up than with it down? And by the way, yes, I did try different angles to see if that improved the mile per gallon and I couldn't see any difference really but here's my theory on it now here's another shot of it there you can see my wife looking up at it admiring it 
and it looks like it might have been a little lower at that point. As I said, I tried different angles, and that was on the way up there just to try to fine-tune the thing. When I actually started doing the, record, the test, it was all at the same angle. I even raised it to the point where it actually got pretty noisy up there and it didn't it didn't improve the mile per gallon any that I could see. So my conclusion with this setup is that you just throwing up another resistance point. You've already got the resistance of the that squared off trailer front there and you've got all that air space in between the back of the cab and the camper that whatever that thing is deflecting it's just basically doing nothing it's going right back down and hitting the side of the camper or the front of the camper so basically with this setup it's deflecting nothing it's just adding more drag is what I'm attempting to explain and that was a little surprising I have to admit because I thought well it can't hurt I've heard some people say well it didn't really help much but it kept the bugs off the front of my camper well my thought was it must be deflecting something then but I could tell you my camper was splattered with bugs so it just did not do anything for me unfortunately Maybe it would work better with a fifth wheel. I don't know. I kind of doubt it. But I can tell you positively in my case that little bit of drag there is losing a little over a mile per gallon. And I've seen advertisements for these shields with the same setup basically a uh, crew cab type, type pickup with a pull trail like this. So thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I'll end this video with one of many stops for fuel at Love's. We got a lot of love showing here at Love's. Show me some love and I'll make you a spot in here. Show me some love. Put your mask on. Don't you back up on me. Put, put that mask on. I don't want to go over here if I don't have to. Looks like I'm going to have to. I'm going to see one pump over here. Look a little baby. Somebody aired up there, baby. Right here.